Welcome back to What Matters This Week. I'm Lauren Maloney. Joining us now is Jordan Rowell, a producer, a documentary filmmaker. Uh, the name of his film is No Other Lake about Lake Champlain. Jordan, thank you. Thanks for having me. You start off in the documentary, as I saw the trailer on YouTube, that you spent two weeks paddling the entire lake. Did you feel that was needed or necessary in order to tell the story? Yeah, for me, um, I had to paddle the length of the lake because even though I grew up uh, just five miles from Lake Champlain in Essex Junction, Vermont, uh, I realized uh, that I didn't know the lake very well. And once I started to learn about the challenges facing Lake Champlain, um, for me, someone who likes to hike and explore outside, it was you know, uh, apparent quickly that I got to get out there and I got to, uh, you know, explore the lake if I'm going to really uh, get to know this place. Well, you just mentioned challenges. When you're paddling, we can see the blue-green algae, the cyanobacteria blooms. Did Is that one of the biggest threats right now or that even you encounter? I think so, Lauren. Um, these symptoms of Lake Champlain that are, you know, present themselves very obviously to us, you know, the top one is the cyanobacteria blooms. Um, it closes beaches so that people can't access the lake. Um, you know, we also have um, invasive species, um, which make it difficult for anglers or boaters. And these are things we can see. Uh, what we can't see, which is sort of what we tried to investigate in the film, is the underlying cause of these issues, which we started to hear from folks we talked to was our fundamental relationship with Lake Champlain. And those conversations that you had with advocates and stewards of the lake, were they easy to talk to you? Did they want to tell you what they've experienced? Sure, yeah, we tried to talk with a lot of different folks from uh, a variety of different uh, places on the lake. Uh, as well as different, um, you know, life backgrounds and careers in order to get as many different perspectives of the lake and its challenges as possible. And, and together, um, they sort of created this more whole picture of, of what it is people are experiencing in the Lake Champlain Basin when it comes to water quality issues. Um, and hopefully, you know, hearing from all those voices collectively, we can start to piece together the puzzle of of what it looks like for our communities um, to, to live in this place in the long term. In what way are people protective about Lake Champlain? Right, people are very, can be very protective. This is a place that we're all very proud of. Um, I don't know about you, but when I, um, you know, show people around my home, one of the first places we go is to the waterfront. And, and for me, it's here in Burlington. And, you know, Lake Champlain has been described as like the crown jewel um, of this region. And so when you start talking about how the lake has problems, you have to thread a difficult um, uh, gap between um, acknowledging that there's a sense of pride and really trying to grow that sense of pride. Um, but also when you point out the issues, doing it in a way that inspires people to want to be involved in, in helping solve those issues, as opposed to just turning away and discuss, uh, in disgust. And that's essentially where the title of the film came from, was this idea of um, if, if Lake Champlain gets, um, continues on this path of, of pollution and, and experiencing cyanobacteria blooms, we don't want people to, to turn to another lake and, and travel away. We want them to acknowledge that, you know, there really is, is no other lake and, and we should be, see those problems and say, hey, this is my home. This is a place I'm proud of. Let me, let me um, figure out what's going on and do my part to, to, you know, maintain that sense of pride. In the trailer, Jordan, uh, we hear a woman's voice saying, sometimes there is disconnect between what needs to be done and what an individual can do. So my question to you is, what can people do? That's a, that's a great quote. That's from Anna Beach, a, a student at St. Michael's College. And she was getting at this, this um, situation that's happening when, 
when issues of climate change and environmental issues are like right in front of our face on an almost daily basis, especially for young people, it's easy just to be overwhelmed and just, like I said, turn away from the lake and just be like, I, there's nothing I can do, you know? Um, you know, to quote one of our other uh, interviews in the film, you know, human beings stink and we're always gonna stink. And so let me just add to it, you know, like it's a lost cause. Um, but there is things that people can do, whether that be um, volunteering uh, for the local land trust or for, you know, cyanobacteria monitoring, whether that means um, voting for people in office that, that value um, clean water and put that at the top of their agendas. Um, but I, for this film, it's, it's really about re-examining on an individual level our relationship with the place we live. And that might mean different things for different people, um, but we really mean it when we want people to, to go out there and, and think about what does it mean to be a citizen of the Lake Champlain Basin? And, um, and how can I become a better citizen? Who do you want to see this film? Uh, so our main audience is really young people and students in the Lake Champlain Basin. Um, the idea for the film came when I was sitting in a University of Vermont uh, classroom after taking a long break from school, I came back and I realized quickly like, wow, there's a lot about my home that I don't know. And there's a lot of issues that, you know, you can't solve a problem unless you know what's causing it. And so we want to use this film to communicate the body of science and work that has been done in the basin for a really long time, but we want to communicate it in a new way. You know, in an era where a lot of folks are getting their news online and where people are watching videos and, and really reacting to those. I mean, think about it. The, the last time that you walked away and had a real, you know, were really impacted by something, was it a scientific paper? You know, maybe not. Was it a lecture? Maybe not. A lot of folks think that videos and movies are what's really causing people to have an emotion emotional reaction to this film. And, and so we're hoping to, to have that happen for young people in this place. Jordan, thank you for sharing part of your story with us today. Thanks so much for having me. And uh, I hope you'll join us for the premiere on April 21st at Main Street Landing. I'm now joined by Dwayne Peterson who helped shoot and edit No Other Lake. Dwayne, appreciate you joining us. Thank you for having me. Why did you wanna be a part of this project? Oh, great question. Um, this project originated, uh, was conceived um, by Jordan in his first semester back at UVM. Uh, he's a returning student and he was inspired uh, by a class that he took. I think early on in the semester, um, texted me kind of out of the blue, asking if I wanted to make a film about Lake Champlain. <laughs> and I was intrigued, so we got together. Uh, Jordan and I had, had known each other for a long time. We um, were friends in high school and we actually worked on a lot of films. Uh, where I was learning filmmaking basically for the first time uh, was with him. Um, so it was a, a great treat to be able to kind of rekindle that relationship and um, work on this, this project together. So um, he reached out to me, we talked about it, talked about what it would take. And uh, I think it was kind of history from there. When you went through your video after logging your video and you went through some of the shots you had, some of the overhead views you had of Lake Champlain what surprised you as far as what you were looking at? Because from our vantage point, after looking at some of the video, it maybe looks murky. We can see the blue-green algae. Absolutely, yeah. Um, I think one of the things that I was surprised with throughout the process was just the great uh, diversity of landscapes that there are in Lake Champlain. Um, you know, I think Jordan will probably say something similar, but I am mostly familiar with seeing the lake from the Burlington waterfront, which is a beautiful view, but it's really only one view. Uh, and there was just so much more to this lake that um, I, was, I was surprised by every time we turned a corner and saw, you know, another vista or a different uh, set of cliffs or indeed the, the uh, cyanobacteria bloom that we encountered towards the end of the trip. Um, it was just amazing. I thought, I thought I knew this place, but I, you know, there's just so much more um, to it than I, than I could have imagined. What was unexpected about this project for you that, that maybe you didn't know about the lake previously? Sure, yeah. I, I, uh, I knew that, you know, beaches closed in the summer and that um, cyanobacteria was something that 
um, could be harmful to your health, especially to pets and, and to kids. Um, but I actually hadn't really seen it up close um, much. I mean, when they close North Beach, for instance, it's not usually the spectacular display uh, of colors and, and textures that we encountered in, in Missisquoi Bay, for instance, uh, an area where I had not spent much time. Um, so that was that was truly kind of shocking to see up close uh, and in person. Um, I would also like to add, though, that I was I was mostly you know surprised and impressed with the openness and the willingness of the people of the Champlain Basin to share with us um, their experiences and their perspectives. Um, throughout the trip, we just found enormous amounts of generosity and um, openness to, to to talk to talk with us, and that was it was really um, inspiring, honestly. The title of the documentary is No Other Lake. How did you both settle on that title? That's a good question. The title was something um, that we didn't know for the longest time. While we were shooting the film, we hadn't, we hadn't come up with it. Uh, it, it you know, we had just used lakechamplainfilm.com as our website and Lake Champlain Film on Instagram as sort of placeholders, which we've kept because I think those are, those are descriptive. But No Other Lake, the, the concept actually came out of uh, one of our interviews. Um, and, and it was with a, a gentleman in Missisquoi Bay who basically laid out the stakes for us very clearly that, you know, if we if we don't protect this place, if we can't if we can't preserve and, and uh, you know, improve the health of this lake, uh, there's not going to be anywhere else for us to go. Um, there, there's not going to be another lake. So, uh, you know, I think it's sort of similar. You might have seen a sign, you know, like a climate march that there's no planet B, right? There, we don't this is not we can't just go somewhere else if this doesn't work out. Um, so it's really, I think, important for us to um, do the conservation, do the work that we can here, uh, make the impact at home, you know, first. Um, so that's sort of where we came up with the name No Other Lake. Uh, Dwayne, No Other Lake premieres April 21st, 7 p.m. at Main Street Landing in Burlington. I appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you, Lauren. It's been a pleasure.